Hi, I want to talk to you about DNA technology or biotechnology um, and how we can use this technology to splice genes together and create genetically modified organisms or GMOs. So here's some other examples of DNA technology. We can do DNA fingerprinting. We'll do, a, we'll do that in the lab in a couple days. Uh, and human cloning. We'll talk about that too in a little bit. But first let's talk about how we splice genes together. Uh, well, first, if you want to splice two genes together from two different organisms, you have to have something to cut those genes. You have to have some molecular scissors. And restriction enzymes are enzymes produced by bacteria that cut DNA. Now, why would bacteria want to be able to cut DNA? Well, it turns out that bacteria get invaded by viruses, just like we do. And their only real defense against viruses is to produce these enzymes that will chop up the viral DNA. So they, they're called restriction enzymes, for example. This one will recognize this sequence and it'll cut right here and cut that DNA. When it does that, it creates these things called sticky ends. So sticky ends are those two ends of the cut DNA. We can use those sticky ends to splice DNA together. So let's look at how that works. So here we have a bacteria. Bacteria have these little circular pieces of DNA called plasmids. Uh, we can take that plasmid and we can cut it with a restriction enzyme. And we can also take a gene, let's say the gene for, I don't know, insulin or human growth hormone. We can identify where that gene is and we can cut it out and we can splice it into that DNA to create this recombinant DNA. We can then insert that DNA back in the bacteria and have a genetically modified bacteria that will produce, let's say, human growth hormone or insulin or some other important um, human protein in the bacteria that we can then use. Or we can use genetically modified bacteria that can like break down toxic spills or can copy genes that we can then insert into plants and create rec uh, recombinant plants and uh, technology like that. So we're using this a lot now. It all gets to this idea of identifying where these genes are, cutting them out with restriction enzymes, and then inserting them either into bacteria, these little plasmids, or into other uh, organisms' DNA. So let's look at some examples. Of that. Here's one. We can take uh, genes, we can cut them out with restriction enzymes, we can insert, insert them into viruses. Now viruses usually attack your cells and insert their viral DNA, but we can modify these viruses so that they attack certain cells and insert genes that those cells need. Let's say in the bone marrow we're not producing certain white blood cells because we lack a certain gene. We can insert that gene in there and that gene goes in and inserts the, the viruses, I'm sorry, insert the gene into those cells, and those cells could be fixed, okay? We haven't had too much success with this, but there's hope for this type of gene therapy in the future. Uh, also, genetically modified organisms, right? Here's an example. This is actually what corn was before we started genetically modifying it through selective breeding, right? And through selectively ge cer picking certain genes, we get corn that looks like that. But we've also now inserted like bacterial genes in the, in the corn that protect it from uh, pests. We've inserted uh, genes that increase the nutrients of certain plants. So we've done a lot more than just selectively picking certain genes. We've actually inserted genes from very, very different organisms. So let's look at some of those. So here's some uh, sheep, right? These sheep are called uh, farm animals, as in pH for pharmacy. They have human genes in them to produce human proteins. In this case, these sheep have an anti-clotting protein. So that um, in order, if you were to try to get this protein out of humans, you'd have to have like several thousand people donate plasma. But we can grow a flock of sheep that can produce the equivalent of that and save huge amounts of money and produce really important uh, human drugs. Um, here's some rice. This is called golden rice. You can see the golden ones have a gene from a daffodil. That gene produces vitamin A. So usually when you eat rice, you just get starch. And this isn't a big deal in the United States or developed countries, but in many poor countries, the average person only eats rice. They don't get the vitamins they need. So we can actually genetically engineer rice, inserting these genes into it to make it more nutritious. Um, here's another example of a genetically modified plant. It's a tobacco plant, and this tobacco has a firefly gene in it that starts to glow. Now it glows in response to stress. So these uh, tobacco plants, uh, when they're, say, uh, lacking a certain nutrient or uh, lacking water, they'll start to grow. You can imagine a farmer going out and looking at your crops and your crops are glowing. Oh, they're going to need some water tomorrow. So these are all some uh, really interesting examples of being able to take genes, 
from one organism, insert it into another, and create recombinant DNA and recombinant organisms, or genetically modified organisms. And that's it.